when the jelly comes to town, I'll tell you where the jelly is in a second. They have to check and make, because sometimes you can't see the whole village. You got to check and make sure everybody's here. And the first thing that we really, really push is that whole idea of energy. And I could see a bunch of people. And I always bring ancestors with me, so it's really a lot of people in here. Because <laughs> ancestors, all of our ancestors know each other. Because we all come from a oneness kind of thing. So all of them go back to that village. Some people call it heaven, some people call it all kind of things. You dig? So some of them are here too. So the place is full. So when I say what's up, you guys have to come back with the same energy so that the energy can meet right here, which is where. This is where we're going to create that porthole to go back into that place that we all love. And if you're my age, which is over 50, then it's childhood. And if you guys are lucky enough to still be kids, it's that place where you can imagine purple dragons and, you know, people with four fingers and, yeah. Okay? So let's try again. Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh-huh, uh-huh. That's better, that's better, that's better, that's better. So let's try firstly, very firstly, we'll go with uh, a word to like bring some more energy. The word for right now is good afternoon, right, in English. The word in Yoruba is ikasan. So let's try it's three syllables. And the beautiful thing about all the African languages, or all of the languages, even English if you do it right, is that it has music to it. So it's ikasan. It's not ikasan. Are you ready? Ikasan. Ikasan. Yes. So who do we bring out first, right? Because I'm, well, me, I'm a jelly. A jelly is a storyteller. I come from a long line of storytellers. My grandfather, who was a tailor and a storyteller, he would get up some mornings in the tailor shop and he'd say, boy, today I will be an Englishman all day long. And from the time I opened the door at 12 noon to 7, 7 p.m. when I closed it, hours later, he would speak like an Englishman the entire day. When he was asking his, my, my step-grandmother, his wife, for his meal, when he was greeting people, when people would walk by and stick their head in the tailor shop and say, good afternoon, Mr. Teddy, how are you, sir? And today, wonderful, wonderful, isn't it? Lovely day, Kenny. And, and never understanding that this was a, a skill and something that would rub off on me when I, when I stumbled into acting and poetry and singing and, all, and storytelling and all the things that happened. So... We, going to Africa really solidified that for me. I really got to understand by sitting with old people who are jalees that that is the spirit that I carry. Storyteller. Village to village. And we bring everything. When the jale comes, there'll be something for everyone. So the kids will have puppets. The men may have dancers. The women may have handsome, strong men. There's going to be somebody that keeps everybody's attention here so we can tell you what, what happened in the last village. So you guys can tell us what happened so we can bring it to the next village. And that became the job of the jelly. And there was always a bunch of characters. So we, who grew up on Sesame Street, decided we would do that for you guys. And so now we have Puppets Village. And it's exactly that. There's puppets from all over the world and, and all kind of different people. And they tell you different stories. So we always start with this guy. His name is Bagalaga. Bagalaga is a Rasta word. It means hello and goodbye. So you could walk into a room. And say, Bagalaga! <laughs> and you could leave the room and say, Bagalaga. Bagalaga. <laughs> so it's a cool name, you know? And he insists on starting all of our shows the same way. I think I said this for you, my friend, would you? <laughs> <clears throat> yes, everybody, yes. Bagalaga at your service here. Just want to open up the show for all my wonderful friends with a short song. Be with me. <coughs> <laughs> Hello there, everybody. Whoa. Happy Sunday to you. Happy Sunday to you, to you. Hello there, everybody. Whoa. Happy Sunday to you, happy Sunday to you, to you. So glad to see your face in this place, I don't want to waste no time. You've been on my mind since yesterday, so happy to see you today. Hello there everybody, whoa, happy Sunday to you, 
ハッピーサンデーツーユーツーユー Thank you so much. Okay, that's it for me. Goodbye. Bagalaga, ladies and gentlemen. And Bagalaga opens up the door for all these storytellers I brought with me, you know? This guy here was actually just a dog in the village. But he insists every time he goes, he's always wanting to come because he claims he has stories too. He wants to tell stories. So we bring him. You never know what he's going to have. You know, he's actually not bad. He's not bad. And they're ready for you. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hello, 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 hello. My name, my name is actually Aja. <laughs> um, do you know what Aja is? Well, Aja is actually Yoruba. Yeah, it's a uh, Yoruba. Is is West African language. This is try. This guy here, yeah, he Yoruba. I'm Yoruba too, but just dog. So, if you can guess, Aja is actually Yoruba word for dog. Get it? Yeah, Aja. <laughs> okay, so they only give me a little time, so I'm going to tell my story. Holy cow, is that me up there on that screen? I'm nervous. <laughs> Do the pose. You got it, man. Come on. Okay, okay, my story. So, I'm not saying that this is me because I know a lot of dogs, but one day, a dog, let's say it was me. It was not me. I was just running along minding his business and he came apart in the biggest, most deliciousest, wonderfulest, yes, those are both words. <laughs> dog. Bone, you know, was just huge. And so he picked up the bone. And now he's super happy and he's running, he's walking with the bone, he's sitting here running and running. And he's, when I get home, man, I'm talking because I got to tell you the story, but the bone is in my mouth, so just imagine. Okay? So. I'm just running and I mean he just running and he's happy and you know he's oh my god he's, you know, I'm gonna bury this bone I'm gonna dig the deepest hole and I'm just gonna bury my bone and I'm gonna eat it every day I'll eat a little bit a little bit a little bit until it's this should take me about a month to finish it's a humongous bone so as he's running he gets to this bridge and he crosses the bridge and the water is so beautiful he stops for a minute he hears it and he looks down and he looks into the water and he sees another dog with a bone. And he's like, wait a minute, I think that guy's got a bigger bone than my bone. <laughs> so now he says, you know what? I'm gonna make him give me that bone. And so he looks over and he says, I'm just gonna I'm bigger than him. I'm just gonna growl and scare him. He looks down and he says, Rrr. And the dog and look back up. And he looked down again and said, Rrr. The dog looked back up and said, Rrr. And he gets upset. He's like, you know what? I'm so tired of this. I'm just going to give him my biggest, most ferocious dog bark. And he said, <laughs> In the bone, he dropped in the water. And it was only in that moment that this dog realized, not me, the dog, that... That was just his reflection that he was looking at all this time. And because he was greedy and wanted all the bones, now he ain't got no bones. And, and he had to go home with no bones, and he couldn't bury no bones, and he couldn't dig them up every couple of days and eat a little bit of the no bones for, for like a month because the bones were gone. And he had to sit there and think about a very important thing that Little kids and big kids and all of us can really remember, you know, sometimes enough is enough. You shouldn't want to have everything, you know, if you have some and you see somebody else with some, you shouldn't want to have all of it and take theirs too because maybe you will end up with nothing, you know? Okay, that's my story. I'm going. Thanks, Ayaba. You're welcome, brother. <laughs> Hi, just ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so these guys, people like me, when we, when we see an audience, it's cool because, well, we get help. 
So people who think that they thought they came out to be audiences like dads and moms who had no idea they were going to be on stage today, all of a sudden are compelled to come and help because their kid is next to them going like this or the guy on stage is going, don't you want to come help me up here? So um, as an artist, right, and, and it's really important, and as a teacher, it's really important to allow our children creativity to flourish and, you know, on top of all the other jobs we have as parents, and I'm a grandparent now, so I love I love it. It's a wonderful world, I promise you guys. Um, you have to pay attention to that. And and if it's something that you see them just doing naturally, your job is to really turn up their volume and, and get them to places that can help them. Because if, that, if they get to do that for the rest of their lives, I promise you, you will not have to worry about so many of the things that our children run into when it comes to self-doubt, when it comes to fitting in. And all of these kind of things that that, that happen now. Like my big, the biggest job I'm going to do this year as a te- as a teaching artist and a performing artist in the school system in in Bridgeport, connect and down in that way, is bullying. Like everybody that I work with for the last 20 years, so every all of the principals and the teachers are calling back, going, Ayaba, do you have anything that could talk about bullying from like middle, junior high school, em- elementary, and high school now? First time this year, high, high school. So I'm busting my brain trying to figure out how I bend these guys into that, so that we can get that away and. Maybe they know it because I told them, but I was that. And I'm an immigrant. So I came and I, I came to this country at 11 years old when it wasn't cool to be an immigrant yet. You know, so I was teased profusely and I was bullied and I didn't. So I react very quickly. Not like I want to beat up the bullies, but in a way like I want to help the kid because I'm still the kid. You know, I got I got to look like this now, but, you know, I'm still, you know what I'm saying? I'm still the kid who, who still calls my mother mommy, you know, at 55 years old. So... I my mother my mother did that. My mother allowed me to have access to everything. So when she realized I did the art thing and she realized I was like my grandparents, her parents, she allowed she didn't stop me from writing and, and drawing everywhere and, and cutting up her things that she might need to make things. So um, it turned into this, and 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 it turned into these guys specifically because you know when you have a grandfather who's a tailor and a grandmother who's a seamstress and you're around them every day because they're helping your mother raise you, it sort of uploads. You know what I mean? And then you become very, like, necessity. You know, as a mother of an invention, they say, so. Cardboard. I love that my art, my art teacher from middle school is in the audience because he's the one that's responsible for putting all of these alternative materials in our heads as, as kids and how you could, you know, see something and bend it into something else. And so it's cardboard that people throw away. And this is really important here because we throw away a lot of stuff in this place, in this country, in this part of the world. When you go to other places and you see the way people recycle, you know? I remember the first time being in West Africa, seeing a walk going on a walk, and, and as I go that way, the man is standing in front of a pile of what I thought was throwaway um, furniture. A couple hours later, I come back, and he's, he's Frankensteined all of them into, into new pieces that people are now buying. And they, they're beautiful looking, you know what I mean? So... You go like that. So you take my imagination and you put me in a theater and you let me meet uh, the director of Lion King years and years ago when she was she was kind enough to show me how she invented all of those masks and it was cardboard. And I was like, the bells are like, ding a ling a ling a ling So I, you know, we call it, we call it, artists call it gleaning. So if you're a regular person and you do that, it's stealing. And it's not good. <laughs> if you're an artist... And you do it, it's called greening. Which is, and greening actually literally means, according to Webster, it's allowing this person's thing to influence your thing. So I, I'm a master gleaner. <laughs> Please let me be very clear on that. And because of that, I've come up with these things because <clears throat> what discovering these guys did was it, it, it opened me up to the thing I love so much, which is my, my, my ancestors and, and my elders and the way they overcame things. And all the little sort of anecdotes and things they have, you realize they, they have this history to them. They go way back to our beginnings. And Aesop, or Aesop de Diop, as he's actually called, because he was a North African who was kidnapped and brought to Greece. And that's why we have Aesop's fables. If you, if you don't believe me, just think about his stories. The lion and the mouse. There are no lions in Greece. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just one of them. And then Brother Rabbit, or Burr Rabbit as he became, became and Brother Nancy. These are all um, things that, that 
we know, literally, I mean, our mothers would take the bee, the, the seeds from okra, okras and things like that and break, put it into their braids. Once they realized that we were being taken and stolen, put it, so that's how things like okra showed up in this part of the world. But in our imaginations, we brought these guys with the, with the hundreds and sometimes thousands of stories that they told. So to be a descendant of those people and, and rediscover these stories and realize that with, with the sewing that I learned and with the art that I learned, I can make them over. So the, here's the lion from the lion and the mouse. And there's the, the, the crocodile and the scorpion from the story with the scorpion and, and the crocodile. And there's the rabbit and the turtle. He's around here somewhere. From the story, from, yeah, from the story of the, the turtle. And the, 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 probably the, the most famous of all the fables is the story of the, the, the between, well, I have all of those stories. I have the original version to all those stories here. And so I'm going to share some of those with you guys. And I could definitely do them without, because now I pointed them out to you. But if we have anybody brave enough out there to actually put on a lion mask and become a lion, and is willing to like do some, then we may have some fun. But I'm, you know, you see, as you see, I'm not afraid to get up and do all of them because, like I said, your job, if you're a kid, is to remember that being a kid is the most awesome thing in the world. And your job, if you're an adult, is to remember that you chose to not be a kid anymore. And you can, anytime you feel like you can just do that again. And if you have kids, it would be the coolest way to get in touch with them. Because the things that you didn't like as a kid, the things that made you uncomfortable as a kid, with your DNA now looking at you, probably the same things. <laughs> so I didn't like when adults stood over top of me and yelled down at me because I come from giants. My grandfather was 6'6". Six, six. Wow. You know, I'm short because my, my father is from Guyana, South America. Yeah, in my family. <laughs> they call me short. So my father is six feet, so... My mother's six feet. So I'm a runt when I go around. Even my oldest son is 6'5". <laughs> and bigger. My great-grandfather was a seven-foot man with 18 triple E shoes and a hand that could hold your whole face like that. Even as a, a grown man, the last time I saw him, I'm like, God, I need a quick... And he, before I could finish, he said... So I come from that. So stories. Let's meet him first. And I think if you... In, 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 in African tradition, he's called the father of, of folklore, stories, Aesop. All of them come from Aesop. <laughs> this is what my grandfather said. And he wore these all the time. He made them, you know. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Uh, these people do not reply very well, do they? I, have, I know I spoke to them about that earlier. But just give them a chance, Baba. Please, I beg. Give them a chance. I beg. Please, Baba. Can we try again? I will try once more, but I know I've been on this planet for quite a few hundred years. I do not have this kind of time to be wasting with people. I know, Baba, but please give them a break. Please, I beg. Please, Baba. I know. I see. I know you talk. Okay, we try again. Good afternoon. Ah, I did it. I know I can see well. I mean, I'm an old man, but I know I see them out there. They're out there, Baba. They're just they're very intimidated by you. They, I told them who you were. Well, okay. My name, if I must explain, is Esope Diope. Yes, that is a Sudanese name, and that is who I am. I'm a Sudanese man. Now, I know for quite a few centuries there have been some misconfusion about who I am and where I'm from. So, let's clear it up once and for all. I am Aesop, Diop, I am a Sudanese man, as you can see from my beautiful tan. I have always looked like this, no matter how many joints you see where I am looking like different people. I am me. I have always been me. And to prove it, I will tell you my most famous, most copied story. It's the story of the boy who cried wolf. How many of you know this story? Of course you do, because all of you have been liars at some point or another. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so here's the story. Well, first, hmm, I'm wondering if I could get someone to play the wolf for me. It's a very powerful role. And you will come out very much towards the end of the play. You just have to go over there and retrieve the wolf and bring him here. Quickly now, quickly now, there are many of you in the audience, I can see one particular person who will just jump up now and rescue me, because everybody else is still waiting to see who will get up and do it first. Mm -hmm. 
I knew it. This is my very good, excellent friend. Bless your heart, my friend. Over there. In the bag. Wolf. See it? There you go. You get that thing on there anyhow you want. You can take that thing out. Give him two seconds of a little music. Perfect. Yes, sir. So you know the story, right? Let's pretend that they can't hear us. So on the end there, you come out and you do wolf things on the team. The first couple of times, we'll do it twice. You won't do anything. Audience, you guys don't get away with it. You have acting roles to do in your chair. You guys are the village. So from your chair, you guys are going to help us because every time he laughs and brings the villagers up and he lies and cracks up because it was just a joke, you guys are going to react accordingly. Ah, oh, this boy is wasting his time. I have if my pot was on the stove. Ah, any kind of those noises that says that, you do that. You do that twice. Yes? Yeah. Beautiful. Are we ready over there, Mr. Wolf? And action. <clears throat> Okay, so here's the story. A long, 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 long... You know what? Many of these stories begin with a long, long... About 25 of those longs. So we will just say, for time, a long. Okay? So a long time ago, in a village in North Africa, there was a boy. We will call him... Manu. So Manu, he was the son of the most famous and wealthy sheep herder in all the village. And his job every day from the time he was about nine years old was to get up early in the morning and bring the sheep, all of them, up the hill to a beautiful batch of grass where there was enough grass to eat and fill their bellies all day long and there was also enough water for them to drink when they wanted and there were beautiful trees with beautiful shade so they could lay and rest when they were full. So, Every day he did this. But it was a very boring thing, doing this for hours and hours from sunrise to sunset when he would bring them all back home, making sure that none of them, even the babies, was missing. And so this one day, this boy decided that he would have some fun with the villagers. So he waited until the sheep had filled their bellies with water and grass and were laying, sleeping peacefully in the shade. And he went to the edge of the hill and yelled down to the village, Help! Help! The wolf is attacking the sheep! The wolf is attacking the sheep! And the villagers, you know, the villagers, because, I mean, their livelihood was these sheep. Everyone came running. And of course, when they got there, here was Manu laughing on the ground. <laughs> I fooled all of you. It was only a joke. It was only a joke. <laughs> and the villagers, who were very upset, responded in the like. Excellent. This is excellent. We will hire them and bring them on the road. We will have to get a big and nice bag for this audience, but we must bring them. They are excellent. I know, Baba, we can't put them in a bag. Ah, we will come up with something. They must come. They are excellent. I know, Baba. Can we finish the story, please? Okay, back to the story. So, the next day, this boy comes out, and again, it's a very boring day. So, after pretending to sleep, and after eating his own lunch, he decided he would try once more and see the villagers would really be convinced again. So he went again to the edge of the hill and yelled down to the village, Help! Help! The wolf is attacking the sheep! Oh God, help! They're eating them! Worry, worry. And of course the villagers came running again. And when they got there, they was ace to this boy again on the ground. <laughs> Two times! You guys are so silly. How could you fall for such a thing? <laughs> I know his father, who's a very proudful man, is very much ashamed and angry with him. Look it. Boy, why would you do this? The people depend on us to take care of the village's sheep. Do not play with responsibility like that. Yes, father. And so, everything went. They went back and he went back to the sheep. And that night he brought them home, promising himself he would not do it again. But the next day, another case of boredom came on this boy. And do you know what he did this time? Yep. Right back to the edge of the woods again. And he yelled down. Help! Help! The wolf is attacking the sheep! Oh my God! Help! Help! And he looked and he looked and he looked and he looked and none of them came. And then out of nowhere came the biggest wolf he had ever seen in his life. And he jumped out 
and attacked all the sheep and he ate them and he ate them and he ate them until there were no sheep left and finally hours later his father came up the hill and of course the wolf left as he sees his belly so he missed the wolf <laughs> and of course hours later after this young man sat there wondering what he would do His father came up the hill looking for him and saw him there with the bloody mess that the wolf left and said, Son, what has happened? And he said, Father, Father, the wolf came and he attacked all the sheep and I tried yelling to everyone. His father stopped him before he could finish and said, Boy, this is what I told you yesterday. Now because you made fun with your responsibilities, now the village has nothing to eat. Nothing to take to market and make money so we can buy you all school clothes and b repair the buildings in the town. Nothing. Now what will you do, boy? And he took him by his ear and led him down the hill back to his home and began planning to buy more sheep so that they could start a sheep herd once more. The end. Now it's very important what this story means. From youngest to oldest, when you have a responsibility, especially as it pertains to your family, you should always take that responsibility very seriously. Whether it is make sure that you clean your room when you're finished or you take the garbage. These things, when you add them up together, they are the reasons that families work. And when you do not do your thing, then there is a break in the chain. So I please, I beg, treat your responsibilities, no matter how small or large, very seriously. Thank you very much. The yeah. end. Give the world some love, y'all. Brother Aesop, so two more stories. You guys good over there still? Awesome sauce, awesome sauce. I'm going to take these out. Because they're cool, but they make you really hot. <laughs> and one of the things with being on stage... That you don't two things on stage that are really a trip for performers. One is when the lights are on, <laughs> you can't see the audience. <laughs> Which is really freaky at first. <clears throat> and the second thing is they like the sign. But I'm not complaining because you know we live in Connecticut, so it, it may be two degrees tomorrow. So <laughs> bring it on, <laughs> bring it on. All right, so let's have the the guy over there. We'll save him for last. This brother here, one of my favorites. Uh-huh, uh-huh. This over here, uh-huh. So Sunday, a, a Sunday, and this is where I, you broke me, huh? In the bag. Couldn't catch my breath for over an hour driving up here. This is where you broke me, boy. Sir, I just wanted you to meet them, sir. You know, they, I've been telling everybody about you, Brother Rabbit. And, I, you know, I, I know that you don't like when I try to talk for you. So I was thinking, you know, maybe you could just... Fill them in a little bit and tell them a little bit, and maybe we can tell them one story. Cool? All right, I think I could do that. You know, I don't mind. Well, yeah. good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Brother Rabbit at your service. Good afternoon. Very good, very good. I, I, I was over there listening. I guess you guys caught on, huh? The whole <laughs> call and response thing. Very good. That's why I always like to go at least third, because, yeah, I, I will scold you. I'm over a 1,000 years old, so I have the school ability to scold as much as I need scolding. You understand what I mean? Yes, you do. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, Brother Rabbit, I know some of y'all are going, is that the same as Bird Rabbit? Well, actually, it is the same as Bird Rabbit, but it ain't the same as Bird Rabbit. And here's how that is so. Now, uh, I'm sure Ayaba already told you about how, you know, we came here in the imaginations of his, uh, or his ancestors. And that's a very true thing, you know. Me, myself, exactly, I'm from the Congo region where the, the, the Bantu-based languages are. And so many of the stories I tell come from there, including this beautiful vest you see that I have here. It's actually uh, some very official Bantu colors and patterns that I, I, I had made. <laughs> uh, I like to stay sharp. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. So... There was this young fellow that would come down and uh, he would sit, you know, down in the south and listen to us tell these stories. So now, if you go look at these stories and you go look them up in the, on, on your, what they call the thing, goggle? Google. <laughs> if you go goggle it, you're going to find out that uh, it will say the stories of Brother Rabbit as told to Joe Chandler Harris. Now, what does as told mean? 
has told me that boy went and took took a, a credit for some stories that he ain't do nothing but listen to. But that's a whole nother story for a whole nother time. What I want to clear up now is the whole idea of this bird thing. So, well, my name ain't Burr. Burr is something that this Joel Chandler Harris fella made because he couldn't really understand the lingo. We call it jibber jabbing. You know, that's when we just sit around and talk as black folk. And so we didn't hear say things like, Burr, where you been, bro? Oh my goodness, Burr, you ain't. Well, I ain't seen you. Burr, your mama cooked one piece of pie. Oh my goodness, that thing is good, Burr. And he took that to understand to his ears, Burr. So he went on ahead and made up a whole word. Bird rabbit and bird fox. When we were just saying brother, uh, we like to talk with music in our voice. You understand? Like, girl, how you doing? How you doing? You understand? So that's the story of that. Now I'm sure all of you know quite well where I'm from. Now you know, uh, you know clearly. And I'm going to tell you well what I would like to call, even though this fellow over here is going to tell you something different, and this old fella here got some stories about Greece and all this thing. I still think my story, pound for pound, is the best story going around. And I bet you all of you know it and could probably tell it to me. But here's the thing that's going to blow your mind. That ain't a true story. That's what we call a watered-down version of the story. So I'm going to give you the real story, but I'm going to need two people to help me first. We need somebody to play the tortoise. And we need somebody to play the rabbit. So that's two people. Now, if you're all chicken, I can go ahead and tell my story. But if you're all brave enough, I, I wouldn't mind the company at all. Uh-huh, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. There it is. Tortoise, tortoise rabbit's there, tortoise there. Rabbit's right over there. You put them things on. And, you know, we'll pretend that the audience is not there again. I'll give you guys a script. So you guys know the story. They have this race. Yeah. So we're going to make the, we'll make the start line right there. Right next to that orange box there. Between the box and the camera. Right. There you go, there you go. There you go. There you go, brother. There you go, brother. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Like that. Yes, yes. And you, you can, so you can, you can go right here, sister. I, I, I'm working with that. You, you, no, you, you got. However, you, you feel comfortable. That's right. So, so the way the story goes is, even in, even in the, 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 the watered down version, they have this race. The rabbit pulls over into the woods, which is going to be like right about here, and just sits and, and he has a meal and he chills out, and the turtle keeps going. And he's just really, you know. But this is about his thing. He's at it. He just keeps at it, and he wins. And just, of course, as he gets out, the rabbit comes out and tries to win, and the tortoise wins, right? And we know that. That's the story we know. Right. So you guys can do that part. Okay. But just pay attention to the, the, the real, where the truth comes in. Cool? Cool. Are you ready? Yeah. The story of the race between the turtle and the rabbit. Well, here's the real story. First thing, let's get some things right. I key and I met in kindergarten. He was my best friend. We've been best friends for, well, a thousand years now. That's the first thing to set up. Uh, who's Aki? Well, Aki, well, Aki and Delo is actually a three word for turtle. But because Aki and Delo, even for us and the Ashanti people, uh, it's long, we still work with it. You see what I mean? So we call him Aki for short. So Aki, and I were best friends. And the whole race was my idea. Yes, it was, but not for the reasons you thought. See, everybody was always teasing Aki because he was the slowest kid in the whole school district. There it is right there. That's what they used to do all the time. And even though he was the smartest kid in the whole school district, he was the slowest. So everybody was always teasing him because I was the fastest school in the whole school district. They couldn't imagine that we were friends and we just kept our friendship. Not secret, but to ourselves. And so one day I got fed up with it and I said, Aki, here's what we're going to do. We are going to have a big race after school and I'm, we're going to play like you. Uh, I'm going to beat you and I'm going to stop. And you are going to win the race and everybody's going to be so happy. They're going to pick you up and put you up on their shoulders and they're going to be like, Aki, Aki, Aki. And then you will be just as popular as I am and everybody will finally begin to see you who you are and stop teasing you. All right. So here's the story. So, Aki, after some time, he didn't want to do that because he's a shy guy. He decided he don't want no parts of that. But I convinced him. And so, you know, he said, okay. So I ran around, snuck out of school, went to all the other schools in the area and said, oh, the kids, 3 o'clock today in the playground, big race between me and the slowest turtle this side of turtle dump. Told all the kids in the school. So at 3.05, the playground was filled to the rim with people. Everybody just waiting for the race. And so we got there at the start line. 
And one of the, somebody said, on your mark, get sick, and go. And I took up, there you go, oh, that's so perfect. Oh, that is so perfect, look at that. And I ducked off into the woods. <laughs> and I keep just kept going along his pace and slowing. And I had me a little sandwich, a little nap, a couple of some carrot juice, you know. I'm a healthy guy, vegan guy that I am. And I kept on going, and I looked around here. Just as he was about to get to the air, I turned around and tried to catch up with him. And just as I was about to catch our teeth, he ducked his little long neck out and won the race. And everybody picked him up on their shoulders and they started running around going, Aki, 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 Aki. And do you know what this fool did? Do you know what this fool did? He made them put him down off their shoulders and he stood there in the middle of everybody. He said, you know what I just realized in this moment? I have one friend, one true friend who was willing to make a complete fool out of himself just to make me feel better and feel like I fit in more. And in this moment, I realize now, I would rather have my one friend than to have a bunch of people who like me for something they think I, I'm good at. And that fool walked off and left us all standing there looking crazy. Can you believe that? <laughs> the end. Now that, my friends, is the real story. That's the true story. That's the actual story of how the thing went down and how the thing happened. So anytime anybody try to tell you anything else, remind them that this was something about two friends and one friend teaching another friend about the importance of a real friend. You understand what I'm saying to you? All right, now. Thank y'all. Give them some love, y'all. Thank you very much. That was good. We <laughs> might have to bring you guys on the road with us, man. You guys are good. <laughs> okay, so we get to the end. The last guy, I'll always leave him for last because he's a cool cat. Very cool cat. Fix him up here a little bit. Ah, you actually think he don't need no introduction, so I'm just going to turn the mic over to him. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hello, everyone. My name is Kwaku Anansi. I, even though you have heard many things from the, my previous friends, we will call them, I, well, Anansi is the three word for spider, and the spider by all indigenous people across from one end of the world to the other, the spider is a symbol for storytelling because they spin their webs the way storytellers spin stories. So, I mean, do we have to argue about who is the originator of stories? Hmm. Is it Anansi? Of course it's Anansi. Don't be silly. I'm Anansi. I'm, a, I'm the spider. Can you understand that? So, all these stories, of course, come from me. And there's a long story where I can tell you about another time. We will come back and we talk about Niyami, the sky god, and the story of how I, Anansi, went up to her in the sky and convinced her to give me the box filled with all the stories so that stories are now a part of our lives here on the earth. This is something you can go and Google or Google on, or whatever this thing is called. You can go and see it and you will find it. It's called the story of how stories came to earth by yours truly. Aha. So, let's do another of my favorite stories. Now, this story, this story, this story here is about a crocodile and a scorpion. And as before, we need two people to help if they might. It's a very nice story, and I would really like it if we could get just two people to help. Yes, my dad. See, this is what I've been looking for. A big child. Yes, my auntie. Now, who would you like to play? Would you like to play the crocodile? Or the scorpion. Okay. Of course. Get her. Go get her. Okay, so let's put your... Let me help you with that. Let's put him down here for a second. Turn around. Give me the two things. Okay, hold it. Hold it up for me. Can you see really good? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Yes, right. Yes. And now is when the second person should get up here. Especially since you just had this little beautiful girl. Show you up by being so brave. You ain't got no excuses to why... I don't see you up here taking up the crocodile yet. Good? Yes? Oh, yeah. <laughs> crocodile. <coughs> now, she's big. Come on, watch, the, watch, watch the, the wire. Good girl. Come over here. Let's see. Come all the way over. Let's see. Now, she may be really big for you. Let's see. Hold her. And if you guys are wondering where, 
Well, my first 11 years on the planet, we didn't have a TV in the house. <laughs> a 19-year-old mother and a grandmother, the seamstresses scraps all over the ground. This is where all of it came from. You got it? <laughs> well, so you, this is one side of the river. This is the other side of the river. So you right. Yep, right here. You're going to come up. You're going to say some stuff with her. You're following my stream. You're going to listen to what I say. When she, when she gets, agrees to give you a ride, you're going to jump on her back, and you're going to jump on her back by going like this. She's just going to hold your back, like, and you're going to be going across the river. Okay? So you got to get almost to the other side, which is right before the cameras. You're going to stop right here. And kids, little kids, one more time. This is my job. This is my job. I don't have another job. You know how mommy and daddy goes to other jobs, and sometimes they comb like this? <laughs> I never comb them like that. Okay? So I, why am I telling you this? Because if you like this, you can do this. Okay? Okay? Deal? Okay? Yeah. Okay? Good. The story. Okay. So one day, and as, as Esau I already told you, long, long time, and never mind, a long time ago, <laughs> in West Africa again, on the coast of a river, a beautiful scorpion comes to the edge of the river. Look at my actress. Look at my actress. And she's looking one way, and the other way, for the breeze that she knows is supposed to be here, but she also knows there was a big rain a few days ago. So she's thinking, hmm, maybe the water has washed away the bridge, but how will I get to the other side? And she needed to get over there very badly because it was dinner time, and her tummy was growling quite loudly, and she wanted to go and have dinner before her mother started calling for her. So she's just looking, and there's no bridge, and she's wondering, how will I ever get across to the other side? And just as she says that, a beautiful crocodile comes slowly up the river, slowly, slowly, and the scorpion yells to her, Miss, hello, hello, crocodile, can I speak to you for a minute? And the crocodile stops and says, Sure, you can speak. And she says, I just need to get to the other side of the river. Please, can I jump on your back and take a very small ride? And the crocodile says, Wait a minute, my friend. You are scorpion. And everybody knows that scorpions like to bite. And if you bite me while we are in that water, we may end up going under the water and be gone forever. And the scorpion said, no, not this time. I know I'm a scorpion. I know a reputation, but I promise you this. My mother will be calling me in just a few minutes, and I really need to get home so I don't get in trouble. Please, 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 I beg. I promise this time I will be very unscorpion like and I will not bite you. I just, in only two seconds, and I will be right across the water. And you know, scorpions do not like water, so please. And the crocodile sat and she thought about it a while and she said, hmm, 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 She said, you know what? Even though it is against my better judgment as a crocodile, who also likes to bite, I will do it. And so she turns around. And she allows the scorpion on her back, very slowly, very slowly. And they start across the water. And just as they're about, stop, stop, stop. Just as they're about to reach the other side. Do you know what the scorpion did? She bit. Ah, look at my actors. Give them that clapping. Clap now, clap, clap, clap now. Give them some clapping. Yes. She bit. She bit the crocodile. And now they're both going under the water. Go down slow, 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 slow. And the crocodile turns to her under the water and says, why did you bite me? I told you we would go under the water, and the scorpion turns back to the crocodile and says, I know, but I am a scorpion, and scorpions bite. <laughs> the end. <laughs> this guy got some cry. And do you know, girls especially, do you know what the, what the story, what the, the, the lesson from this story is? Well, the great writer Maya Angelou tells us, when somebody tells you who they are, when somebody shows you who they are, you should believe them. And especially for us children, we all have, everybody knows Spider-Man, Hans? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know Spider-Man will have a tingle when danger is around? We human beings have it as well. It is called your gut feeling. So you, especially children, if you come upon someone who is a stranger and you get that tingle, that means listen to that tingle. You understand? If somebody shows you who they are, your job is to believe them. Okay? Thank you very much. The end. No, I know, I know, I know. I know you guys heard a lot of really crazy tales today. And 
some of them may be true, some may not be true, but there's only one way to find out is by asking a Nancy who is the master of all stories. And we can call him, but you have to help me. Now, the three words for come is ba. So you have to say Anansi ba. 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 Hello, hello, hello. Children, young and old, from now and before and to come, all of the things you heard from this man's mouth and all of these puppets were true. Now, if you choose to believe them or whether you choose not to believe them, your only job is to repeat them and to continue adding more stories to the box of stories so that children will always have stories. Do you understand? Yeah. Bye, guys. And then see. Yeah, thank you guys. Okay, so how about how about you want to do a quick skit? So I'll be the reporter, and you guys are the two basketball players that just won the WNBA, and I'm going to ask questions. You ready? You ready? So you guys, I look tired. Like the game is just over, and I'm going to ask you like one question each. Okay, ready? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Skip Skipperson here, and you're at the end of the game, and oh my goodness, what a magnificent game, Maggie! You just scored 38 points and led your team to victory. How do you feel about the thing? Oh, Maggie, let me tell you, girl. And Jennifer, wow, you were terrific. I saw you do seven dunks in that guy, and you really, I mean, whoa, you were ferocious. How did you play so great? I don't know. Wow, give him some love, guys. Give him some love. Give him some love. <laughs> yes, I love it. And and you guys look, I, like I was telling you earlier, I'm a recycle artist. So we'll look here. Let's go, let's go use this guy, I guess. This will be the last one we do. So like this guy, what do you think this is? This material, touch. Oh, it's like a towel. Exactly. It like it's like a blanket from the house. This don't, one feels like a blanket. Why do I use this? <laughs> right? How about these? What do you think this is? Wait, touch. ping pong. Yes, ping pong balls. And you see inside, you know the part where you put your hand in the hole like this? It's just some cardboard from like an old package and I just bent it. Yeah, huh. I feel You feel that, right? That's what's inside here too. And what? how about this? What do you think this is? Like that, that that comes on your toys, right? To protect them. Bing. Pretty cool. This stuff, there's a place right in New Haven. It's called an aftermarket. You can go and get like reusable that's yarn and that's all that like, stuff. And this that's is... That's like yarn twirled up. Exactly. This is just... this. These are sticks I get from Home Depot. And this is an old hanger. And this in here is just some sponge from like an old... An old... You don't have sponge in yours. <laughs> Cool. So why am I showing you all this? Because you guys, if you want to, you can try one of these. And you already know, even the, even the even the most expensive puppets, the ones on TV, they still operate like this, just like that. Cool. Exactly. 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 Let's give the girls some love, huh? Thank you.